Good morning. Thank you, Eko san, for reading the scripture in Japanese. Hi, my name is Satoru Nakanishi. I'm one of the pastors here at Presby. And it is a great honor for me to share God's words with you from Hebrews 6. Uh, let, me, let me pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning, for your word, for your love, the promise that you have given to us. Through this word, with the, ho- the help of the Holy Spirit, Help us to understand it clearly in our head, accept it in our hearts, and demonstrate it through our hands. Help us, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So I usually preach in Japanese, and I was uh, on sabbatical for three months. And during the sabbatical, I, I uh, hardly spoke any English. <laughs> so you might recognize that my English is a bit, little bit rusty uh, still. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes with, uh, with the help of God. Uh, we'll be able to do this. Okay, I want to start by saying this. I love babies. Do you love babies? I think all of us do. Uh, that's something so precious and captivating about their innocence and how they are depending on us completely. And I've, uh, I've kept all my children's baby pictures on cloud storage uh, on the online. And there's a, a function of an app that brings up all the memories. Um, do you have that kind of uh, app in your phone or on your computer? So uh, it's something like, okay, 13 years ago today, or 15 years ago today, and I see my, my kids' baby pictures. And they're, by the way, uh, 13 and 17 now. They're not babies anymore. <laughs> and when I see my uh, children's baby pictures, I'm so captivated by it, uh, because they are so little, so cute, <laughs> so beautiful, right? And, um, and They've grown, you know, so much since then. And although they're not, no longer babies, seeing those auto-generated photos and videos from years past completely captivates me, and I can spend easily hours just looking at these pictures and being, no, you know, nostalgic about it. And I love those uh, baby pictures so much that sometimes I find myself wishing, oh, I wish my children could stay babies forever. For about five seconds. <laughs> and then I realize, wait a minute, it is actually good that they are growing and maturing. It is actually good that I don't have to change their diapers. I don't have to give them bath. I don't have to you know, tell them everything that they're supposed to be doing. You know, I don't have to follow them everywhere. It is good that they are maturing and growing. And that just fills me with great joy watching them develop, develop into capable young people. I love them just as they are in every stage of their lives. But here's the thing. I love them so much that I wouldn't want them to stay just as they are. I delight in watching them grow in seeing them mature as a parent, that just brings me a lot of joy. And I believe God sees us in a very similar way. God loves us just as we are. And he loves us so much that he does not want us to remain just as we are. He delights in watching us grow and he delights in watching us mature. So that's the main point of the message, essentially, today. That's the only thing that you need to remember from this message, by the way. So let me read it again with the slide. If it comes up. Let me see. Okay, I'll I'll try again.
Does it come up? Okay, let me try to disconnect and reconnect. See if it. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, here's the main point. Okay, it's not working very well. Bear with me. How's this? No. Nope. How's this? Oh, there you go. Finally. Okay, let's uh, read it together. Sang, hi. God loves us just as we are, and he loves us so much that he does not want to leave us just as we are. God delights in our growth and in our spiritual maturity. So let's turn to Hebrews 6. And in this first verse, we find the word, therefore. And what is the question that you're supposed to ask when you see that word? Therefore. What is it therefore? Right? What is it therefore? And it is a signal. It is a signal that the writer is building upon something that was previously stated. So to understand Hebrews 6.1, we need to backtrack and see what was going on in the previous chapter, chapter 5. So let's look at that. Chapter 5, from verse 12, it says this. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is an and is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So here in these verses in chapter 5, end of chapter 5, the writer of Hebrews is pointing out that there's a gap. The gap is that while those Hebrew Christians that this uh, letter is addressed to, it's supposed to be an adult. They are like infants, they're like babies. They're supposed to be teachers. They're, su they're supposed to be adults eating solid food. And yet they remained as babies drinking milk. Okay, so we understand that the writer of the letter is addressing uh, is, uh, is this serious issue. And why? Because God delights in our growth and spiritual maturity. Specifically, this letter to the Hebrews was written to the Jewish Christians who were facing severe persecution. Life was hard, and some were tempted to turn away from their newfound faith in Jesus Christ and return to the old ways of Judaism turning back to trusting the law and the prophets in the Old Testament without Jesus Christ. In many ways, this letter is written to encourage them, urging them not to give up their faith in Jesus Christ, who is far greater than the Old Testament laws and prophets. So let's look at the first verse again. And we find this term, the elementary teachings about Christ. What does that mean? It is not referring to basics about Christianity, okay? Like ABCs of Christian faith. I've taught uh, Sunday school classes, say, basic Christianity. I think uh, there were some classes offered in this presby. So this uh, term, the elementary teachings about Christ, is not referring to the basic teaching about Christianity. It is talking about the Jewish understanding of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament laws and prophecies. And why is this called elementary teachings about Christ? 
It is because the Old Testament law and prophecies were always pointing forward to Christ. They were meant to prepare the way for the coming of Christ. So let's look at Hebrews 10. So in the same letter, a couple of chapters later, in chapter 10, it says this, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. And that reality is Jesus Christ. Think about this moment. The Old Testament law was like a shadow. It was useful, it was even necessary, but not the real thing. The law's purpose was to guide people to the ultimate reality, which is Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. Here's a picture that I took during my sabbatical. I was able to go to Minidoka, a very historic uh, place of reflection uh, and uh, remembrance. And on the way back from Minidoka, we took an a RV and we camped in one of the a forest in Oregon. And this is a picture that I took, the family of four, that's us. And can you see how beautiful our shapes of the shades are? And what if I said this? I love shadows of my family. They are beautiful. <laughs> They're awesome. I just love the shadows. And by the way, I don't want to spend any time with them. I don't want to be with them. I don't want to see them eye to eye. I don't want to talk to them. But you know what? I just love their shadows. Does that make sense? It's silly, right? And that's exactly what these Hebrew Christians were about to do. They were tempted to go back to the shadows instead of loving the reality that is Jesus Christ. So that's what this letter is a warning about. Uh, and um, encouraging them to hold on to the faith in Jesus Christ. And don't get me wrong, the Old Testament laws and prophecies were good. They were necessary. But Jesus is the best. That's the important point of this letter throughout. Jesus is greater than the law and the prophecies. Jesus is greater than the angels. He is greater than Moses. He is greater than priests because he is the great high priest. He is greater than the sacrifices offered in the temple because he is the Lamb of God who sacrificed himself for us once for all. Jesus is the best because he fulfilled all of these Old Testament prophecies and laws. So here's something to consider. What do you think is the greatest enemy of the best? What is the greatest enemy of the best? The greatest enemy of the best often is not the bad. It is actually the good. The greatest enemy of the best is often something good. We can become so comfortable with the good and we lose sight of the best. The Hebrew Christians were in danger of settling for what was good, the law and prophets, the temple rituals, without realizing that Jesus is far better, that Jesus is the best. The same can happen to us. We can settle for good enough in our spiritual lives. But God is calling us to press on towards something greater, the best. What does it look like? It looks like the growth and maturity in Jesus Christ, that we keep trusting on what is best, Jesus Christ, and that we become more and more like Jesus Christ. Hebrews 6.1 says that we are to press on toward maturity. The word maturity here can also be translated as completeness or perfection. Now, how many of you are complete and perfect? 
I am not, and I don't think any of us are, we're not going to achieve completion or perfection in this life, but we are called to pursue perfection, pursue completeness in Jesus Christ. And that's what it means that we become more and more like Jesus Christ. So let me ask you this. Are there any good things in your life that might be holding you back from the best? Maybe these are things that aren't necessarily bad, but are preventing you from fully pursuing Jesus Christ. Are you settling for shadows when the reality of Christ is right in front of you? Remember, God loves us just as we are. And he loves us so much that he does not want to leave us just as we are. He delights in seeing us mature and grow spiritually. And that looks like we are pursuing Christ, striving for perfection and completeness in him. Do not settle for the good when the best is already offered as your gift. People often ask me this question. Why are there so many, why are there so few Christians in Japan? Have you wondered about that? Many people ask me that question and I always say, I don't know. Because <laughs> it's a, such a, a complicated question and I don't have a clear answer to that. Uh, it is said that the Christian population in Japan is less than 1%. It's actually approaching 0.5%. And I still struggle to answer this question, but one of the contributing factors that I see is this. There are so many good things in Japan. Do you agree? If you've been to Japan, you probably enjoy uh, wonderful food, wonderful nature, very rich history and culture, delicious and abundant food, landscapes, rich history, and high level of technology and modern convenience. Uh, every time I go back to Japan, the first place I go to is a convenience store because it is truly, truly convenient. <laughs> you know, uh, if you've been there, you know what I mean. So many Japanese people have so many good things and sadly, because of these good things, many people are blind to the best, namely Jesus Christ. You don't know that Jesus is all you need until you know that Jesus is all you have. Let me repeat. You don't know that Jesus is all you need until you know that Jesus is all you have. Isn't that true? I want to share a testimony of Sakie Matsuda. I saw her earlier, there it is. She came to Presby about 12, 13 years ago and she was baptized in 2014, 10 years ago, and became a faithful member of our church and she's been growing, maturing as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Can I, can I say your age? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> she is 94 and still growing. And 12 years ago, or 13 years ago, when she uh, was baptized, she wrote this in her testimony. On May 11th, 2011, while my son Dwight was brain dead in a hospital, pastor came to talk to me. He led me in prayer. Then for the first time, I felt God's special presence around me. I sensed God's warm and kind hand placed upon me. And at that time, I believed in God. After Dwight went to be with the Lord, Patty, Patty, gave me a Japanese Bible and invited me to Presby. I have been attending Presby over two years. That was 10 years ago. Uh, now and just finished studying basic Christianity with Pastor Nakanishi 
and I came to faith in Jesus Christ. So Sakie uh, lost his son, lost her son, uh, Dwight, suddenly and tragically, and that's so, so sad. And yet, God used that moment to reveal Jesus Christ to Sakie. And I believe Sakie realized at that moment that Jesus is all she has. God loves you just as you are. And he loves you so much that he does not want to leave you just as you are. He delights in seeing growth and maturity in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is all you have. He is the best of the best. So let us press on in Jesus Christ. Amen.